I'm Reverend Ernest Demby. I'm here at this magical place on the Magatha River called Beachwood Park. This is where black children could play on the beach and swim while their families cooked out and listened to famous singers like James Brown and Ike and Tina Turner. This place called Beachwood Park had a first wheel and other rides. There were swimsuit contests, judges judged by famous people like Joe Lewis, heavyweight champion of the world, and Paul Robinson famous actor and singer. The river was also used for baptism even when the water was cold. Beachwood Park was a 65 acre site on the Magathy River with 3,000 feet of waterfront located in Pasadena, Maryland. The park was purchased by Reverend Hiram Smith in 1943 despite covenants that barred the sale of land to anyone of Negro, Chinese, or Japanese descent. Smith got around the covenants by using a white straw buyer. He bought the land and with the intention of converting it into a non-segregated beach resort and amusement park. In those days in Maryland, beaches were segregated. Very few places like Cars Beach in Annapolis allowed black people to enter. Smith, a pastor in Baltimore, was determined to create an amusement park where black people could enjoy outside time with their families and swim in the lovely waters of the Magathy. There was a lot of resistance from the all-white neighbors to Smith's purchase, which was contested in court in 1946. But in 1949, the Merlin Court of Appeals ruled in Smith's favor, citing a 1948 Supreme Court ruling that found restrictive covenants unconstitutional. During these segregated times, busloads of people arrived from Baltimore and Washington. There were two kinds of crowds, though. Churchgoers and families who came on Sundays to cook out and eat and swim, and the partiers who came on Fridays and Saturdays to listen to the music, drink, and have fun. For people like Doris Green, Phyllis Reed, and Reverend Jerome Howard, Beachwood Park was a wonderful place to grow up in. I grew up in Beachwood Park. It's an amusement park. We, um, in 1957, my parents moved from the Freetown community to a house 309 Beachwood Park Road, right across the street from Amusement Park. When they bought the house, we got beach privileges along with them buying the house. It was a lot to do. We were self-babysitted. As a matter of fact, with Amusement Park across the street, <laughs> I was happy, always happy. At the, at the main gate was um, Reverend Smith's son. That, Reverend Smith was the owner of, the, of that park and his sons worked the gate. And I was there near the gate all the time because I had a little crush on his son, Billy. Though I was like a eight-year-old little girl and that was a grown man, <laughs> but I hung around the gate a lot. But, um, you know, the, the, the amusement wasn't free, but beach privileges we had. In other words, we could go into the beach and we didn't have to pay a charge. I remember there was a Ferris wheel. Everything the children would want to play and uh, you know enjoy themselves with. Merry-go-round, swings. As a matter of fact, if you see one dimple on my face, it's not real. Um, I ran between the swings and it caught me, and that has been there ever since. Yeah. <laughs> Thank so what you. What was the cost of getting into the amusement park? I think it was 25 cents. 25 cents? Yeah. There was a dance hall in there. Um, they, um, I was young. I couldn't go in there. My parents didn't allow me. But people drank and partied and danced and did it all in there. I remember James Brown coming. I remember uh, uh, Maxine Brown. I remember the blue lights. I knew, oh, Chubby Checker, yeah. Like Little Richard would be there also. Yeah. Little Richard would be there, the Shaw Lights. Um, they even had uh, the Four Tots that was there. Oh, yeah, they mm -hmm. all, or anything that, or during the, chit, uh, that during the uh, Chitlin Circuit, whenever people came to Cars Beach, yeah. they would also come, come here because, the, Park, because right. they would go from venue to venue. And the reason why they call it the Chitlin 
uh, circuit is because uh, African Americans yeah. loved the inner parts of the pig, which was called chitlin. So that's why, and we would eat that soul food at those venues. And it was a whole bunch of us girls, boys, you know, and like we had to picnic every table she could set. It was a beautiful place. Have been as you look uh -huh. like where would the singers have been? Where do you think now yeah. to me? Yeah. I would think our stage was right okay. long in here. Okay. Yeah. I do believe it. Uh -huh. yeah. There was a large dance hall. Dance hall. Outside, but, uh, no, it, was, it had a top to it, but uh, everything else on the sides were open. It was just an open platform where people could walk right on in. It was no door, it was just completely open all the way around. Well, my memory is that uh, I don't remember any whites being there at all. Yeah. The only time that I remember uh, whites were there is when the YMCA came in and they taught all of the little ones that didn't know how to swim to swim in the water. They also had a lot of baptisms there. Yes, baptism. Uh -huh. uh, like I was saying before, uh, my grandfather, the Reverend George A. White, uh, he baptized, and a lot of the local Baptists and other ministers in this particular area uh, baptized a lot of people uh, there. Many of the beaches in the area we weren't allowed to go to, like Sandy Point or to Beachwood. I mean, or to. Uh, 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 Fort Smallwood and Beachwood Park was uh, the only one besides Cars Beach that we could go to to really enjoy ourselves uh, without having to go out of state somewhere. Considering coming from jumping out of bed in the morning and even before breakfast you just run down and, and we would go in our underwear because we were young kids. Young, we right. had no bumps, you know, right. no bumps and we go and jump in the water. Right. Yeah, and in my experience in school, it was uh, quite, uh, it was similar to hers. Um, when I went to, uh, through to, at uh, Ben Field, it wasn't that bad, but when I got to the high school, it was a, a difficult time uh, for, because when you were in a school of, uh, each class only had about eight to 10 African Americans in each particular class. Uh, the, the, it was not receptive. Uh, they were not receptive to teachers, neither were the students. And it was difficult. And uh, many times I thought I was going to get suspended. Never did. But I was bullied quite a bit until uh, one day uh, I was bullied so much that I went up to a guy and I smacked him upside of his head. And from that moment on, I never had any more problems because. Uh, people would say, uh, don't mess with uh, Jerome because uh, he's crazy, he, he'll hit, he hits back. But it was difficult to come through that. Uh, it was not an easy thing. And we just had a 50th uh, reunion uh, about uh, four years ago. And a lot of the African Americans didn't even want to go to the reunion because they had been treated so badly during those times. But when the ones that did come, uh, the whites came to us and says, hey, you inspired us, you, 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 you gave us uh, strength or you encouraged us for this, that, or, and they couldn't understand why we, we were just, uh, had, uh, uh, from our parents and from our grandparents, had learned how to endure. And we had the strength, we had the, uh, uh, the knowledge to, to go and just carry through to try to be good citizens. And now uh, we look back on it on the 50th year, and I tell you, people have encouraged you. I've become more Facebook friends with all of my white friends like you would not believe. They follow me on Sunday morning on Facebook uh, Live, which is Pastor or Jerome e. Howard Sr. on Facebook. His life is just beautiful. Mm. It's just beautiful. Yeah. You know, after a while, you don't see color. No. You just meet people. That's right. You I have a full people. zebra family. You have some people who are locked in, you know, to some things, but under God, yeah, we're all there's safe. no color. That's right. I don't see color anymore. I grew up in a magazine community called Johnsontown. It was not too far from the beach, and a matter of fact, some of my cousins actually worked at the beach. They worked while doing the pony rides and other little things down at the beach. I, too, was bused from Johnsontown to base high school. The irony of the beach in me was my spiritual journey 
started at Beechwood Park. I was invited by some friends of mine to go to church with them. And one day, just to get them off my back, I said, okay, I'll go to church with you. And I went to church, and while I was there, the pastor asked me, did I want to be saved? And I thought to myself, if I say no, it's like I'm turning my back on God. And that day they talked to me, and actually I understood everything they were saying. They asked me, what did I want to get baptized? And I told them, yes. Little did I know, they were talking about going down to the Beechwood Park where they were baptizing people. I went down to the, bat to the beach. They baptized me in Jesus' name and my spiritual journey began. That was over 40 years ago.